<laughs> Wonder Hussy here. You'll never believe what happened to me this time. Okay, I had just set out on an expedition, left the Death Valley compound earlier today around noon, locked and loaded, rig is full of water and food and supplies, and oh, I got my refrigerator, my jackery's charged. I'm ready to head out for a month in the backcountry. So I headed up, uh, I went to St. George, Utah and had lunch with some really cool viewers of this channel. Wonderful family, they were so nice. Hung out, had, well, it was more like dinner, I guess. I didn't leave there till six. And then I was headed towards Lake Powell. Beautiful Lake Powell, desert lake, uh, where I was gonna go on an overnight jet ski camping expedition. Okay, this company, Up Lake Adventures, uh, offered me a free trip. We were gonna take jet skis all the way up to the top of the lake and we were like way up Glen Canyon, you know, far away from all the, all the people so we could be alone and camp out on the beach and we were gonna go fishing and it was gonna be awesome. So I was headed down the highway from St. George, Utah to Page, Arizona. And this is very desolate country if you've ever driven this route. Beautiful country, it goes right by Zion National Park. All these, I mean, you can see these gorgeous red rock cliffs in the background. Matter of fact, you might notice there's a really big two-story house right over there. And you might recognize it from a video I made here once years ago. Uh, anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. As I was driving along the highway, my uh, car started uh, making a weird like intermittent whistling noise out of the, I could hear this faint whistling noise coming out of the engine compartment. It sounded like a really high pitched whistle. Ah. Intermittent came and went. Okay, I didn't think too much of it. <laughs> That's the kind of town this is. Anyway, uh, next thing you know, all the lights came on on my dashboard. You know, like my battery light, my emergency brake light, the auto track light, like all the, all the lights lit up. Well, that's weird. I don't have all those things on. And then I noticed my speedometer was going all over the place. And then I noticed my stereo shut off. And then I noticed my air conditioning shut off. Oh my God. Thank goodness this didn't happen back in St. George where it was 111 degrees. Out here it's only, it's a balmy 90. It's actually very nice. Sun just went down, beautiful day. Anyway, my car broke down and I just had my oil changed. Uh, three days ago by my trusted mechanic in Vegas. <laughs> Should I say formerly trusted mechanic? Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, you said you, he said he cleaned my battery terminals. I don't know. It seems to me maybe my alternator's bad because, okay, the battery, uh, I pulled into this gas station park. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, I'm a mess. <laughs> I just dropped my glasses and knocked the lens out. Anyway, I was driving along, all the lights coming on all funky. Well, I was in an area with no cell signal. This is a very desolate highway if you've ever driven it. And so I thought, oh gosh, what do I do? Do I keep going? Do I pull over now and try turning it off, turning it back on? Well, I was afraid if I turned it off, it wouldn't start up again. So I texted the guy that I was meeting in Lake Powell, the Up Lake Adventures guy, and he was very helpful. He said, if I could just get the car to Page, Arizona, he had a mechanic there that could fix it while we were out camping on the lake which would have been awesome. But I didn't really trust it to go that far, you know, because if I kept going, if I kept going any farther, it gets even more desolate for like I'm two hours from Lake Powell and there's no cell signal, it's a dead zone. You know, I just didn't think that was a very smart idea. So I'm talking on the phone to my guy in uh, Lake Powell and he goes, well, why don't you, you know, I finally, I pulled up, I go, oh, I think I'm coming into a town. And then I recognized it as, one of those polygamist mansions, Colorado City, that's where I am. It's the town where all the fundamentalist Mormon polygamists live. I made a video here once years ago where my sister and I went here looking for sister wives. You know those Mormon fundamentalist women that have the big puffy hairdos and the big puffy sleeves and long prairie dresses? Well, this is the town they live in and that big house there, that's why they have all these big houses to house all them wives and kids. So that's where this happened. I pulled into this Chevron gas station here because uh, my guy and Paige was like, well, pull over, you know, to a safe place. You know, I have signal here. There's people around. Shut her off and try cranking her again. So I did nothing. So then I pulled out my little jump pack that I carry with me. Nothing. It wouldn't even, the engine wouldn't even turn over. I waited a few minutes and it kind of uh, turned over a little bit, but nowhere near enough. So then I went, there were some people with an RV because we're, right near Zion Park. There's a lot of tourists out here. Very nice family from 
It sounded like he was from New Jersey, South Jersey. I go, hey, I'm sorry to bother you. Would you mind giving me a jump? He jump started me and my engine did start again. So I get back on the phone with my guy at Lake Powell. I go, okay, engine's running, what should I do? He said I should just keep going and try to make it. Because <laughs> I guess there's another town about 30 miles ahead called Fredonia, and I don't think that's a very big town. But anyway, okay, if that's what you think I should do. So I got back on the road and I only went like, God, not even an eighth of a mile and the car was like, mm -hmm. all the lights blinking on and off, wouldn't go more than like four miles an hour, 10 miles an hour. There's no way I'm continuing that way into the void when I could come right back here to this nice, safe town with cell signal and call roadside assistance, which is what I did. I called roadside assistance. I have roadside assistance through my insurance. And uh, fortunately, it's only 25 miles back to the town of Hurricane, Utah. Okay, it looks like the word hurricane, but it's pronounced hurricane. Uh, so I went ahead and I booked a hotel room there because it's already like, I think it's like eight o'clock almost. I booked myself a hotel room. I'm gonna be towed back into Hurricane. And I guess I'm just gonna try to figure out a mechanic situation in the morning. Uh, hopefully I can find somebody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try getting in touch with those people I had lunch with because they were so nice. And they did say, as I was leaving, you know, we'll come rescue you if you ever have a problem. Now they might've just been saying that. Now's the time to see if they want to put their money where their mouth is. Okay, talk to the tow truck driver. He's on his way from Laverkin, Utah, which he said was like, well, he said it might take him 90 minutes to get here, but you know, I ain't worried about it. I already have a hotel room booked. I have a car full of ranch water. Might as well just crack open a cold one, hang out here in the parking lot at B's supermarket in Colorado City, and do some people watching. Before I do that though, uh, while I still have some daylight, I figure I'll give you uh, the guys that are watching or the ladies that are into mechanical stuff. Here's a peek at what we're dealing with. Now don't laugh at, I know my engine's very dusty and I should probably clean that out periodically, but isn't that why they put these plastic covers on the components to keep them you know, safe from the dust. Anyway, this is the battery that my mechanic, he said he tightened, or no, he cleaned the connection for me just the other day. So I don't know, it could just be a bad battery. You know, it is three and a half years old, which I guess is pretty old for a battery in the desert, especially in these hot temperatures. Uh, you know, the bummer about this battery is I got suckered into buying a lifetime warranty battery from Auto Nation you know, the dealership network, Auto Nation. Well, I used to take my rig into the, uh, the Toyota dealer in Vegas to get all the service done. And I needed a new battery. The, the OEM battery that came with the rig died after, gosh, only like a year and a half. I made a video about that, I think, many years ago. So when I went and got that replaced, these guys talked me into buying this lifetime warranty Auto Nation battery. So I get a free replacement anytime the battery dies. Only downside with that is you have to be near an auto nation. And I hate to tell you this, but there ain't no auto nations in Colorado City. And there sure as sugar aren't any down the road in uh, Page, Arizona, Lake Powell. There might be one in St. George. I don't know. I'm going to get it taken care of in the morning because, oh, believe it or not, you know that family I was telling you about that I had lunch with this afternoon? Well, I emailed the daughter. I go, hey, here's what happened. I broke down. Can you ask your dad if he has any recommendations for mechanics in the area? You know, I wasn't asking him to help me. I just wanted to know if he recommended a certain shop or not, so I won't get hosed in case there's no auto nations. Anyway, he called me right away and said he'll, he'll be there eight o'clock in the morning. He's gonna come to my hotel in Hurricane. And he said he will personally uh, change my alternator for me if that's what it is, or just replace the battery, whatever. So I have, I feel pretty good, man. I have, I'm in a safe place. Like I said, I got a cooler full of beers. I'm in an interesting place. And I have really cool people that are trying to help me.
What a night. I'm supposed to be camping on the shores of beautiful Lake Powell right now. Instead, I'm in this Econo Lodge in Hurricane, Utah. Just so you know, this is what $59, including taxes, gets you in Hurricane, Utah, which I should mention is right outside Zion National Park. Uh, so I would, I don't know, I would expect it to be a tourist hotspot. Uh, so I was really surprised how cheap this room was. I mean, yeah, it's not the Ritz, but gosh, compared to some of the places I've stayed, it's pretty nice. Uh, only downside is there's ants in the bathroom. But better ants in the bathroom than ants in your pants, am I right? Anyway, I'm just glad I made it to this room. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only get to enjoy it for about six hours, and I gotta get up and <laughs> deal with the rest of this adventure. Uh, yeah, it's already like 11 o'clock, man. That tow truck driver came and got me around, I don't know, 9.30, and well, he was a yacker, and then I made the unfortunate mistake of asking him about his guns, and well, if you know any gun enthusiasts, you know that that's a bad idea because he went on and on and on, and it's like, isn't your wife waiting with dinner for you? Because he told me his wife was waiting for him. Well, anyway, now it's, uh, now it's time for bed because I have a feeling it's going to be another long day tomorrow. Okay, wow. Obviously, it's the next morning. <laughs> this awesome family that I met yesterday in St. George came out first thing in the morning, 8 a.m., uh, and got me right down the street. Luckily, where I stayed was like two blocks from a Napa auto parts store. And we, we well, he had to jump me twice just to get me two blocks, but we made it here, went in, the guy at Napa tested the alternator and the battery. It wasn't the alternator, it's a bad battery. Simple, quick fix, and I'm so lucky to have these good people working on it. Look how cute this family is, you guys. Look at these beautiful women. Look at this handsome guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> guys, thank you. You're welcome. You're yes. so welcome, anytime. Well, and so, like, you were just watching my videos, and, like, how did we meet? Tell us, Tasia. Tasia, it's all because of you. Uh, like watching her videos. Yeah, watching my videos, you watching, wanted to meet me. Yeah, I just emailed you. And she emailed me, invited me to lunch. Uh, they took me to lunch, late lunch yesterday. That's and awesome. Yeah. I got to ask her questions. Yeah, she did. She had a few questions. What's your, what do you drive, Tasia? Uh, Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, she's a Jeeper. And she had me actually autograph her Jeep yesterday. That was, that was awesome. awesome. I was, was very awesome. flattered. And it, great day. It's been a great day, even though, I mean, maybe not for you, but for me, I mean, this is like a godsend. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You're tops in my book, Tasia. Oh, and thank awesome. you. And Melanie. <laughs> thank you. And Daniel. Daniel's busy. Brand new battery. Exciting. Okay, hold everything. Uh, put in the new battery. And then we thought, better check the alternator again, just in case because I sure wouldn't want to end up in Colorado City again <laughs> and break down again. Well, guess what? It was a bad alternator too. And that figures because I have 147,000 miles on the car and that's the original alternator. So thankfully this awesome family, I mean, it's like Desert Baywatch. These beautiful blonde angels come running with a life-saving mechanic. Uh, they took me, they figured out a, a garage that could oh, get me in right now. I'm in their car. <laughs> We're all going to breakfast. Anyways, my uh, car is at the shop. I'm getting a new alternator put in <laughs> later this afternoon. In the meantime, we're gonna go have breakfast and possibly do some exploring. I don't know, I feel like anywhere you break down though, people are generally pretty happy to help. But I don't know, maybe not Vegas. <laughs> okay, there's more twists and turns in this story than a soap opera. We all went to breakfast while I was waiting on this alternator repair, but the guys here at this Goodyear uh, mechanic shop in Hurricane, they said they check, checked the alternator and it was fine. And they said that Napa must have done a faulty alternator test. So they're saying I'm good to go and head on down the road. And it's kind of a bummer because I was, this family invited me to go back to their house and swim in their pool. and. Well, we were gonna go exploring. We were gonna go check out an abandoned house. And now we have to say goodbye. But you guys told me to call you if I run into any problems, right? Yes. Okay, where's Tasia? Tasia, come give me a hug. 
Tasia wants to say goodbye to me. Thank you, Bye. Tasia. Thank you for introducing me to your awesome family. Of course. And thank, thank you, for, you for coming. Of course, I'll be back. Awesome. Yeah, they invited me back to do some rock crawling. They're, you're a big rock crawler. Yes. And she just got a really cool new rock crawler. Yep. So I'll be back for sure. Awesome. Okay, let me give your mom a hug too. Yes. Bye, thank you. Uh, I'm so lucky to have all these cool people. Like, and this all just happened because, well, actually, I guess you watched my videos first. Yep, I'm the I'm the one that got this. He's thing. a ringleader. He got them both hooked, and now the whole it's a family affair. The bro, your brother too. Yeah. yeah I didn't get to meet him. Yeah. I guess I better get my hug. Yeah, you better. Oh, thank so you. So good to meet you and thank spend you, time Diego. with you. And yes, likewise. I'll be you back. You guys yes, stay out of trouble. Who knows? I might call you in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we hope you break down. No, not really. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am just totally overwhelmed with the kindness of strangers. I mean, first of all, that awesome family helping me out. Then, this amazing Goodyear tire shop, they didn't even charge me for running the diagnostics on the alternator and going through all that. He wouldn't take it. I mean, I gave him some cash just as a tip, but uh, golly, if this is how everyone in Utah is, <laughs> I might need to reconsider my Death Valley compound. Everyone I've met out here, <laughs> has been super, super nice. And this whole experience, breaking down, getting towed, getting a room, it's only cost me about $200. I mean, I'd pay 140 bucks for a new battery and $60 for that hotel room. Oh, and I, I spent 25 bucks on breakfast just now. But can you imagine the kindness of strangers? This just goes back to what I always say and if you turn off the TV and just go out into the real world, well, you'll find out that people are actually pretty good. Now I'm going to get back in my rig and continue on. I'm supposed to be going to Lake Powell. <laughs> Let's see if I make it. If I don't, though, well, I can always call that good family and they'll come help me. They said they would.